Hi, this is Frank Warren, and you're watching Lights Out. Thank you very much for joining us here today. An appropriate venue for the King of Hearts. Big show on Saturday night at Stevenage in Mensley. And uh, fingers crossed that it's going to be a nice fine night to enjoy some top class boxing. Well, our promoter, of course, is Frank Warren. So, uh, opening words for you, Frank. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us here at Nebworth House. Uh, yes, we've got a, I think it's a first. I don't believe there's been a world title fight in Stevens. <laughs> don't believe so. And maybe not in Harbinger. I'm not too sure about that, unless it goes back to the, uh, the old Bear Knuckle Bay. But um, it's fantastic for Bill. He's uh, in his home county, the King of Hearts, and uh, he's on his quest to get himself back into a, a, into a prime position. He had a terrible year last year real bad year last year and this is his chance to become a double weight world champion which is a very rare occurrence uh, for British fighters and if he does it it'll be in some great, in great company but obviously he's got a tough fight he's and uh, worth underlining as well that because Gilberto uh, Ramirez has uh, vacated the title this is for the full WBO super middleweight title. As we announced it at the start before uh, he, he didn't send his letter. But that's that's how that's what I said to Bill when he made the fight. I said I believe this is going to be for the full title and that's how it's turned out. So Bill's big moment now. Well we'll be hearing from Billy Joe and from Chef Abs as well who's going to be fighting him for that title. We'll be hearing from them shortly also Joe Joyce and Alexander Ustinov but also on the undercard of the show on Saturday. Fascinating looking fight at super bantamweight between Brad Foster, the British champion, up against Ash Lane, the Commonwealth champion, and on the face of it, Frank, a really good match at this. <coughs> Excuse me, yeah. We, you know, we, I think we've shown everybody over the last, uh, last couple of years what we're about and what BT Sport are about, and that's uh, putting together really good cards, but with real competitive undercards. And this fight is a, is a cracking little fight, British and Commonwealth title. You know, Brad Foster, um, I've got to get this right, never had a pro, so never had an amateur fight. But they had a wealth of experience as a mixed martial arts fighter and uh, obviously won various titles. But you know, to come into the game and win a, win a, title, a British title after 11 fights is something special. So he's in with a tough guy with Ash Lane and I think we're going to get a cracker of a fight there. Well, let's hear from Brad. You come into the professional game, Brad, without the, uh, without the normal amateur pedigree. How tough have you found it to actually learn, if you like, as a paid fighter? Uh, it has been tough. Um, obviously, I'm learning on the job in all when I first, first started out. Um, lots of good sparring with good fighters, picking up what they do. And uh, yeah, just learning on the job. And uh, in my last fight, I picked up the British title, so I can't be doing too bad. Yeah, you're saying that as sort of an eye picked up. In fact, it was a hell of a performance, beating a very tough guy in Josh Whale on his on his home territory up in uh, up in Barnsley. Yeah, yeah. Well, I went up to Barnsley. Um, I knew that fight was going to be a tough fight, and I didn't take him lightly. But they were all going to they were writing me off. So you know, I believe in myself, and that's that's all that matters. And I knew I was going to go there and, and get the job done, and I did. You, you come from Litchfield as well. I mean, I know Steve Bunce is from Litchfield, but there's not too many not too many fighters come from there. No, there ain't nothing really in Litchfield, to be fair. It's just a little little city, to be fair. There ain't no really sportsmen or anything, so I'm the, the first. So. Now, what's your thoughts about Ash as a fighter? Because uh, he's been around a while. He's got maybe a bit more experience than you've got. Yeah, he's got a lot more experience. Um, He's going to be a tough fight. I'm preparing for a tough fight. He's a Commonwealth champion. He ain't no walkover. So, uh, yeah, I'll prefer prepared for a really tough fight. Well, let's uh, hear from Ash. What's your thoughts about Brad as a, as a boxer? I think you were pretty impressed with his performance last time out. Um, yeah, you know, I watched him against uh, Josh Whale. So I fought against Leon Gallo, I think it was. And, um, yeah, they were two very good performances. So, how do you cope with that? I mean, obviously, he's a taller guy. He's got the uh, maybe speed on his side, has he? How no. do you see the fight? No, he ain't got speed on his side at all. You know what I mean? But back against the old me, yes. But um, the new me, no. 
you know, I um, last seven fights, you know, I've turned my career around for, from the ups and downs I've had before. And, um, you know, my experience and everything I've learned from the last two years will, uh, you know, give me strength in that win. You, you say you've turned your uh, turned your career around. What's been the key? Has it been because you North you were Northampton based originally, weren't you? Now you now you're based down in Bristol with the Sanagars. Is that that move which has been the key? Um, you know, there have been a lot of things in the background which have been the key in turning my career around, turning my life around. Um, to be honest, um, like I say, a lot, a lot of things. Personally, um, I'm not really going to go into detail. Fair enough, but uh, sparring down there with the likes of Lee Selby and Lee Haskins must have helped. Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, I spar Lee Haskins on a regular basis. Lee Selby, Andrew Selby. Um, now, there's very, very, very high level of sparring for me. You now I travel around. I don't stay in one place. I'm always learning. And more is improving. So, what makes you convinced you can beat Brad? He's got two arms, two legs, and one head. Why not? <laughs> and uh, and so far as you're concerned, what makes you sure you can beat Ash? I just believe it's my time. Uh, I'm a happy Brad, and when there's a happy Brad, I perform better. A happy Brad? Is he going to be happy on Saturday? <laughs> Good fight, though, Frank. Win. Good fight. It's a cracker. You know, it's again, it's one of those. Little gems of British boxing, you know, it's competitive, and you know the two guys, uh, they ain't going to give an inch. They're just going to be standing there and toe-to-toe, uh, -to -toe and the best man will win on the night. Now, we seem to have been uh, speaking to uh, Joe Joyce quite a lot in, in recent weeks, since uh, yeah. you've signed the, uh, or uh, done the pr promotional agreement with Ringstar and with Richard Schaefer, and uh, a big test in every sense of the word, against Alexander Ustinov. He's a big man. He's a big, big man, and I know him very well. He's, done, he's been over here a few times. He's been sparring. He sparred with, uh, he sparred with Tyson before uh, a couple of fights that Tyson had. Um, he's, and he's, he's, I'm sure he sparred, sparred with actually Joshua and so forth. But you know, he, he, this is a tough fight. At the end of the day, don't know what, what way you want to look at it. I know people keep saying you know, with, uh, with Joe that um, He's won, he's been in the, he's won, sorry, he's won the silver in the Olympics, he's got a wealth of amateur experience. He's still only had eight fights as a pro. And this is a big step up for him. And it's Alexander's 38th fight. His last yeah. two fights might have wound up in defeats, but one was for the well, look at, look WBA at, title, Manuel Shah, uh, and then against Michael Hunt. A good it's fight. A, it's a big step up for him. It is a step up. And, uh, but the one thing when we had our negotiations with, with Richard Schaefer, and, and with Sam and the rest of the team, uh, Adam was the, and Joe, but specifically from Joe's mouth, is I don't want to be messed around. I don't want to be marking time fights. Foot down on the gas. I just want to get there as soon as and as quickly as possible. So he's got t he's got a tough fight this hand. You know, this is no no given <coughs> at all. Well, he's six foot seven. Joe, I think you're what is he six five and a half, six six? Yeah, roughly six six. You even round it up. Yeah. So there's some there's some big guys up there on Saturday. You you fit and raring to go. Yeah, yeah, I'm good to go. You know, but, uh, training and preparation's gone really well with Adam Booth and you know and the team and um, you know fit and fighting fit and ready to go for Saturday night. How much has Adam added to you, Joe, since you've been working with him? Is it is it you know he's 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 noted as a as guy who is good on improving your defence. Is that what you've been looking at? Greater lateral movement, that sort of thing? Yeah, and um, you're obviously not getting hit by a lot of, uh, getting your head offline after you've thrown the shots and also to, you know, a lot of it is generated from the legs. So, you know, we've been doing training and that, um, incorporating that kind of stuff. Eight wins, eight knockouts. Are you going looking for another? Yeah, nine wins, nine knockouts. You'd be doing it'd be uh, an achievement if you were to do so. This guy is uh, is tough, to put it mildly. Yeah, he's uh, you know very experienced. He's had what, what did you say thirty eight 
fight. This is his third Yeah, so yeah, he's a big, strong guy. It's going to be tough, and it's um, yeah, it's a big, it's, you know, it's a step up, and um, you know, it's, it's going in the right direction. Well, you know, where I want to be, so I have to beat these guys to. Uh, you know, to get to the next level. How, how much of him have you been able to see? Have you studied him, watched him? Yeah, I've watched a couple of his fights. I've watched that one with um, Hunter, um, the last one, and um, a few other ones. So I can so I can see what he has in his arsenal and um, also what I'm going to have to do to beat him. He can punch. Yeah. Which, uh, which you have to be aware of, I guess. Yeah, and not get hit. <laughs> But I mean, if I do get hit, I can take a shot and I can give one back, so there's uh, not so much problem with that. Well, let's uh, say hello to uh, Alexander, who's here to fight Joe. And uh, can you ask Alexander, please, uh, how he rates Joe as a boxer, what he thinks about him as a fighter? Looking for the Yeah, he's He's thinking that uh, he and all the boxers thinking uh, all of them be in position of Joe and uh, they know it's very hard fight to get in a big step of the boxing, but he's, uh, he knows he's prepared to win with Joe. He's a very good um, boxer, he knows him, he always... On, on Saturday, he will, um, we will see who is the strongest boxer in, Anglia, in uh, England, and he's prepared for the box on Saturday. Does he, do you think, or does Alexander think that uh, Joe might have underestimated him? He's thinking that doesn't matter the, um, how tall or big is the person. It's the best uh, show after the boxing. You can see who is the stronger. Uh, sometimes could be small child, but the power of the um, training will show on the day. You look a bit. Uh, you, the, you look a bit thinner than uh, last time I saw you. What, what sort of weight is he looking at going into? I'm talking to Alexander. Here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you in the sun, yes. <laughs> He's thinking he is now, he's the same as been before. He's not feeling any changes. Joe says that he's going to be looking to knock you out. What's uh, the reaction to that? Uh, Everyone sitting here is all kind of the boxers, so um, everyone trying to win and thinking will win the day, but he's thinking the best results will be on Saturday and we will see who will win. Okay, well, we look forward to that one. And Frank, it's a, a, a great opportunity for Joe kind of to make a statement. It is, and uh, I know that Hamish, you know, I've spoken to him quite a bit about it, and he, he's out to make a statement. And he comes through this. We've got a big show on the 13th of July at the O2 in London, which will be a heavyweight night, um, which obviously features uh, Daniel Dubois against Nathan Gorman for the vacant British title. You know, Joe on that 
on the hard providing come through, it's going to be a mess like that. He can't afford to slip up. No. He cannot afford to slip up. And as I say, I think it's going to be a tough fight for him. Well, let's move on to the main event. We've already uh, said a word or two in, in setting this up. Stage is yours, Bill. How are you feeling? <clears throat> yeah, very good. Just want to thank everybody, first of all, for, uh, for coming out and Frank Warren and uh, my management team and BT for making this happen. But uh, it's been a long time coming. Um, you know, like Frank said earlier on, I had a terrible 2018. Uh, I feel that my title were robbed up, off me, not uh, beaten off me by a better man or someone I could shake hands on the night and say he was the better person. But, um, you know, we're here today, I'm fighting for the super middleweight title. Um, I, you know, when this fight was first made, I, uh, I jumped at the chance of Frank to uh, sign the deal. Um, you know, I was a bit gutted when I heard it wasn't for it, but, you know, Frank and, uh, and, that was, and the team were saying, listen, like, stick with it, it will be it, just been a miscommunication here somewhere. So I'm happy it turned out that way. I'm happy. So uh, it's for the full world title, and I'm hoping to become two weight world champion. Well, I will become two weight world champion. I think it's it's worth underlining that uh, the the fight which was to have taken place, you defending your your world title, that didn't happen because the local commission said no way, we're not going to license it. But it wasn't a case of you being banned. You were vacated, and then the British board, having looked at the circumstances of it decided that there was not a case to answer insofar as being banned was concerned. Yeah, I mean, look, see, sadly, when you go to these other promotions and, and stuff, you don't get fairly trashed, I say, but um, to say the least, obviously, I've got um, a law case on it now, and that'll be all sorted. Um, but, you know, I should never, ever have been stripped. I could have boxed anywhere else in America except from that state, you know, so uh, it was one of them, but it's behind me now, and uh, I've got a new challenge in... Uh, in the super middleweight uh, rankings now, and I'm looking for the big names, not looking past the Sufi. Obviously, I know I've got a deal with him accordingly, but um, you know, I believe that I'm better than that, and um, I'm looking for the big names, super middleweight. In a lot of ways, it's, it's kind of a fresh start, isn't it? Because I mean, after beating uh, was it Munro and then Lemieux, Boxing Monthly here in the UK voted you as their fighter of the year, so that's what you've got to get back to. I mean, yeah, look, I know I've got it inside me, I'm 29 now. So um, I'm just coming to my prime now. I know that no one's seen the best of me yet, but um, it's down to me to put that hard work in and show it. And uh, with BT backing, obviously now I think that uh, we can make the bigger fights and bring them over to the UK. So uh, we'll be looking to make some big fights in the future, most definitely. What's the difference for you fighting at 12 stone rather than 11.6, those extra pounds? Do you, feel, do you feel that you are a genuine super middleweight? Uh, people look at me and say I'm a small super middleweight, but we see what I mean in front of them on the night, you know. It's uh, it's one of them all. I've been <coughs> sparring cruiserweights ever since I've been, you know, ever since I turned pro, so I'm used to that, the, phys uh, the physical side of it. But, um, you know, you still got to adapt to the new weight. But, you know, it just means that I've not got to bar myself down that little bit extra more. I mean, I can, you know, just not relax, but, you know, you still got to be professional when you're making the weight. I've got a dietitian and uh, nutritionist and Dave Stash who's here now, and the weight's going lovely at the minute, so, um, just got to put on the performance, you know, it's all right looking good and looking good punching the pads and everything, but he's a tough fighter coming. A lot of people saying and writing him off saying, oh, it's a 100% win, but you know, no fight's 100% win. You know, he's fighting for the for the super middleweight title as well, and he's number one in this uh, WBO range. And I think people need to realise that and realise it's not just a one or two round knockover job, he's coming to win, so I've got to make sure to be on my game and be on my, my A game and put a, uh, and ex well, send out a, um, an example to the other super middleweights. Yeah, yeah I mean, you, you know probably as well as anybody just how much he has to achieve here, potentially. I mean, if he goes and beats you, it's a life changer. Yeah, 100%. So, uh, like I say, I've got to be on my own game. I will be. But um, I will guarantee one thing, whatever he brings on the night, I will bring 10 times more and make sure to get that win. Just tell us how you look at him as a fighter and what you see as his strengths because he's been in against against cruiserweights against light heavyweights and comes into this on the back of 10 straight wins well i'm coming on the back of 27 straight wins so you know i look at it as no other opponent i train hard um you know when i'm in camp especially uh, world titles on the line i've been in numerous of championship fights i know how to win them um i know he's a come forward strong fighter but you know, if I'm on my game, no disrespect, I should box his head off. 
So it's one of them. He can come try and knock me out. Use his, he has to come and try and knock me out because there's no other way of winning. Shifat looking to be the first ever Albanian born world champion. That would be a, a, special, uh, a special achievement. Tell us uh, what it would mean to you to win this title. Ich kämpfe für mich selber, dass ich den Gürtel äh, gewinnen kann, weil ich habe so viel gearbeitet, für diese Chance zu bekommen, für Weltmeister zu bekommen. Und natürlich, das gebe ich alles erstmal für mich, den Gürtel zu gewinnen und dann für meine ganzen Fans, Deutsche oder Albaner, ich, sind alles meine Fans. Und natürlich, ich freue mich auch, wenn ich äh, erste albanische Champion bin. Okay, what uh, Shafat is saying that basically he's uh, doing that mainly for him, uh, or first, first to him, that's the most important because at the end he has to win it. Uh, and then of course for all his uh, fans and uh, also for the Albanian and the German people, but obviously if he would become an Albanian uh, first champion. world champion, uh, that's going to be a big thing in Albania and also of course in Germany because uh, He's fighting under the German flag, and uh, it will be also a big event for Germans because at the moment we also don't have a world title champion uh, in in Germany. Based in based in Munich. Munich, yeah. Munich. That's yeah. correct. It would be the first time that Munich would have a title. Yes. Billy Joe has just said you heard him that he's going to. He thinks if he's on his on his game, at his best, that he should box his head off. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Also, er kann so gut drauf, wie er kann, aber ich bin auch gut drauf. Ich habe hier gekommen zum Gewinnen und gebe ich alles. Wenn er gewinnt, ich gebe ihm sein. Ich gebe Hand und gratuliere, aber lass uns schauen, in Samstag, wer gewinnt und wer nimmt den Gürtel mit. Okay, so, what he's saying is that uh, uh, Billy Joe Saunders is certainly uh, trying everything to win, but uh, obviously Shepard is doing exactly the same thing and uh, he is looking forward to the fight. And uh, when in the case that uh, Billy Joe Saunders would win, obviously he would of course congratulate him and give him the hand and uh, congratulate him. But there is also a big chance that it might be the other way around. So he thinks he's got the boxing skills to get to. You know, I mean, he is, he is a very, very good mover. Yeah. And he can punch a bit. Das kann man schon erstmal sehen in Samstag. Er kann so viel bewegen, wie er kann, so schnell wie 